Hello YouTube and welcome back to Be A Loser. We've shown in this series that type 2 diabetes is fully reversible and in most cases completely curable. However, I've received more resistance to this series and that previous claim than any other that I've made. Most of this resistance has actually come from type 2 diabetics that I've reached out to on forums and support groups. And most recently, it was actually Google who told me that I was wrong about this claim. I've been running an ad using Google AdWords to generate exposure for this channel until that ad was suspended due to my site being, apparently, misleading. When I asked for clarification, this is what I received as their response. I understand that there might be a cure of these health concerns as per you. However, unfortunately, we do not allow such claims since medically scientifically, we do not have any proofs of such cures. So my response to them was that I could show them medical and scientific proof that my claim is valid. And their follow-up response was, this is just to ensure that the end users are not misled as curing diabetes and obesity falls under a category of miracle cures. These cures can be curbed, however, cannot be reversed. There are many products which claim to be curing type 2 diabetes. However, they too have a number of side effects which might have severe results on people. Hence, as per these side effects, we can confirm that there are no particular result of curing type 2 diabetes. So, I decided to disassociate myself with Google AdWords. Obviously, this greatly hurts my ability to gain exposure. I have very mixed feelings about this, since Google allows me the forum of YouTube to try and help people, while also, at the same time, hindering me from reaching those people quickly. They've just become one more cog in the machine that continues to perpetuate the lie that T2D is chronic and progressive. So in this video, we'll show how losing even a single gram of fat can begin to reverse diabetes. So to recap from previous videos, T2D is characterized by very high insulin resistance. And as we know, insulin's purpose is to put food energy, sugar, into the liver for storage as glycogen. When the liver becomes full of sugar, it then converts the excess carbs into fat through a process known as de novo lipogenesis. If the liver is empty like a deflated balloon, then the sugar goes in very easily. But in the diabetic, the liver is already full. And so the insulin has great difficulty pushing the sugar in. This gives the impression that the insulin is not working correctly. But in reality, it's simply because the liver is rejecting the sugar. As the insulin resistance gradually increases, so do the blood sugars. A study known as the Whitehall study followed healthy patients for several years. Some of the patients were eventually diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. The researchers studied the archived blood samples to understand what was happening. Now initially, the blood sugars only rise gradually as a response to the slowly increasing insulin resistance. This resistance is overcome by higher levels of insulin secretion. But this is ultimately a vicious cycle. More insulin leads to more insulin resistance, leads to more insulin, and so on. But at about the two-year point, the insulin levels fall. These new levels, while still high, are unable to cope with the rising blood sugars. Over time, these levels become high enough to garner a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. Insulin is normally produced by the beta cells of the pancreas. Doctors believe that these cells burn out from constantly secreting insulin to cope with the insulin resistance. This is why experts believe that T2D is chronic and progressive due to the continued burning out of these beta cells. However, in his twin cycles hypothesis, Dr. R. Taylor postulates that these beta cells are not burned out, but merely hindered by excessive fat. 
We know from previous videos that insulin resistance leads to fatty liver, and this in turn causes the liver to export some of this fat to other organs, most notably the pancreas. And it's this fat in the pancreas that disrupts the beta cell production. It doesn't actually cause the production to fail or burn out. This hypothesis was later supported by the counterpoint study. In that study, patients ate a very low calorie diet, 600 calories per day over eight weeks. Over that time, the beta cell function slowly started to increase as the fat in the pancreas decreased. This clearly demonstrated that the beta cells weren't burned out, but simply impaired by excess fat. And this is great, but we must be sure that the fatty pancreas is the root cause of the disabled beta cell function, and not that it was simply due to weight loss. So Dr. Taylor conducted a follow-up study. He used patients that were undergoing bariatric surgery because they have a consistent weight decrease. The patients were divided into two groups, one group with type 2 diabetes and one without. The groups were then matched for age and weight. Post-op weight loss was also similar in both groups, 29 pounds, 13 kilograms, over eight weeks. In the T2D group, there was a significant decrease in fasting glucose levels, 9.4 millimoles per liter to 6.4, and A1C levels dropped from 7.6% to 6.2%. They had successfully reverse their diabetes. Both groups showed a drop in fasting insulin, which would be expected. So if, as we stated, both groups lost equal weight, then what's the difference between a person with T2D and one without? Well, it's not the weight. It's the fat accumulation in the liver and the pancreas. So Dr. Taylor measured the intraorgan fat of the patients. The T2D patients had much higher levels of pancreatic fat. This is not found in a non-diabetic obese patient. Additionally, before the surgery, insulin response is much lower due to the fatty pancreas having its insulin production hindered. And eight weeks after the surgery, well, the pancreatic insulin response was normal. The fat in the pancreas of the T2D patients was identical to that of the non-diabetics, meaning that the pancreas had not failed at all. And post-surgery, the T2D was clinically reversed. The only difference between an obese person with T2D and one without is fatty pancreas. But as we discussed, the liver becomes fatty before the pancreas. So what happened to the liver fat in the patients? Well, at the start of the study, the T2D group had high levels of liver fat. And eight weeks after the surgery, their liver fat is the same as the non-diabetic patients. So insulin resistance has normalized and the T2D is in remission. And this makes sense, really. Oversecretion of a hormone does not lead to organ burnout. I mean, think about it. Oversecretion of cortisol doesn't lead to adrenal failure. Oversecretion of thyroid hormone doesn't lead to thyroid burnout. Overthinking does not lead to brain burnout. In reality, oversecretion leads to organ growth, not organ death. And even if there was burnout, this process typically takes decades. But T2D develops in just a few years. Now, the twin cycles hypothesis is much more sound. Excessive intraorgan fat due to hyperinsulinemia leads to T2D. And as Dr. Taylor's study showed, the removal of this organ fat reverses the insulin resistance and the beta cell failure disappears. Losing a single gram of fat from the pancreas begins to reverse T2D. The clinical implications of this are amazing and at the same time infuriating. First of all, T2D is simply not chronic and progressive. The two aspects associated with it, insulin resistance and beta cell dysfunction, are completely reversible and caused by intraorgan fat accumulation. 
And while the continued ignorance of the experts is maddening, not to mention other large corporate entities, the great news, the amazing news, is that there is hope for millions of type 2 diabetics who believe they are living with an incurable disease for life. And all we need is a way to remove even a single gram of fat from the pancreas. We already know for a fact that fasting can do that naturally and safely. So go back and review this series and determine for yourself whether or not it's worth trying. If there's even the slightest possibility of living a life without type 2 diabetes. I know there are those of you who subscribe to this channel that have had success. And I, I can only hope that you will steer those here who still do not believe that the current treatments for T2D are pointless and harmful. Those who still believe the lies, they are told that T2D is chronic, progressive, and incurable. Those who cannot believe that there is a simple and natural cure for this disease that has consumed their lives. It's not a miracle cure. It's just science and medicine that have opened their eyes to the truth. I believe it's our duty to help those people to see the truth, help them to heal. And it's my great privilege to have even the smallest part in that. And we'll end this one there. We have many more videos to come in this series as well as our other series. So if you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe to receive updates when those videos post. Remember to click the bell to enable alerts and be sure that the bell is gray. If it's white, then alerts are disabled. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Be A Loser Today as we post updates there as well. And if you like this video or any videos on the channel, please consider clicking that like button as it does help us gain more exposure, which is obviously a little more important now. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, keep being a loser.